Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. We will continue reading from the book Al Ajwabatu Al Jaliyatu Fil Ahkam Al Hanbaliya or The Clear Answer in Hanbali Rulings by a Sheikh Musa bin Isa Al Qadumi. Rahimahullah. We are at lesson number 23 where we will be discussing the wajibat or obligations of the prayer. So let us begin. Bismillahi rahmani rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana Innaka anta al-alim al-hakim Allahumma anfa'ana bima alamtana Wa alamana bima yanfa'una Wa zidna ilman ya rabbil alameen قال المؤلف رحمه الله نفى الله به وبعلومه وعلوم مشايخنا في الدارين آمين So the author will start a new section the wajibat of salah and we just want to quickly differentiate the wajibat or the obligatory elements with the arkan or the pillars if you remember from the last dars the pillar cannot be left out of the prayer due to uh, doing so intentionally out of forgetfulness or out of ignorance. It can't be left out unless one has a valid excuse not to perform it. Whereas the wajibat, the obligatory elements, they can't be left out intentionally but if one were to uh, forget about something or out of ignorance there is a way to remedy it uh, remedy this which would be the uh, prostration of forgetfulness which we will discuss in a later chapter but I, as we said the important point here is how to differentiate it from the arcan so in both cases intentionally leaving a rukun pillar or one of the wajibat out will render the prayer uh, invalid but the wajibat unlike the arkan can be replaced by uh, prostration or two prostrations if left out out of forgetfulness or ignorance the author of Rahimahullah says 57 how many wajibs of salat are there what are they and sorry just to remind you we are reading from the translation of a sheikh Khalid Shah we're on page 71 so once again the author said how many wajibs of salat are there what are they and the author replies there are eight wajibs of salat or prayer they are a Takbir, other than the opening takbir. So takbir means saying Allahu Akbar. And uh, Al Buhuti mentions a good benefit in his uh, Sharh of Al Muntaha, where you know he says that if you're coming late to the prayer, and for example, you see the Imam is going into Rukua. So you're coming into the prayer, you will make uh, a takbir. So it's important that when you make this takbir, like I said, you're coming late to the prayer, you see that the Imam is going to Rukua. You, you need to make sure that you're intending the takbirat al-ihram, because this is the pillar. This is a bit of a special case. I, I don't want to go too far into another direction here, but maybe I can just summarize saying that if you see that Imam is already in Rukua, so he's already done the movement, and you want to enter, join the prayer, then you make, you intend to do that takbir of ihram, and then you can join him when he's in the Rukua. You don't have to do uh, a second 
takbir in this instance, but just make sure that you've intended the takbir to ihram, and you cannot intend in this case for the takbir two kinds of intentions such as the ihram and the ruku'ah. So just in that case, uh, intend the ihram and but what we're talking about here for the wajibat, we're talking about the other takbirs that one reads in the uh, movements of the prayer. So I think you're familiar with this. For example, uh, when going into rukuah, as we said here, uh, when going into the sujood, uh, getting up from the sujood to in, in the sitting between the two sujoods, uh, if you get up after sujood, you know, all these movements have a takbir. This takbir is falling under the wajibat or obligatory elements. Uh, the author goes on B, saying, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Allah has heard the one who praises him by the imam and the individual worshiper. And this is also called the tasmiya and for those of you who are aspiring students of knowledge, I hope that you try to memorize these Arabic terms. Even for those who aren't aspiring to go to that level of uh, seeking knowledge, I think it is important at least some of these more common terms to be memorized if you don't know them already. So uh, saying Samiyallahu liman hamida is also known as tasmiyah. And as the author has highlighted, this would be said by the Imam or the one who's praying individually and he doesn't say so here but this would be read uh, coming out of the Rukua so why he specifies the Imam and the one praying individually is that if one is a follower he need not uh, read this the uh, only the Imam would read it. And then the author goes on C, saying, Rabbana walakal hamd, O Lord, and for you is all praise. And this is said by the Imam, the follower, and the individual worshiper. So this would be said after the tasmiyah, and this is called the tamheed. Uh, and in this case, all three types of people praying, whether it be the imam, the follower, or the one praying individually, would say this. And At-Takhlabi clarifies in his sharh that saying, Samiyallahu liman hamida, would be uh, said when one is actually uh, rising from the ruku'ah, and then when one is up straight standing then would say Rabbana walakal hamd and the author goes on D saying Subhana Rabbil Adim my Lord the greatest is free from imperfection once in ruku'ah so in the ruku'ah or the bowing one would say this minimally one time and this can also be called a tasbih. And then the author goes on E saying, Subhan Rabbi Ala, my Lord, the loftiest, is free from imperfection once in sujood. This can also be called a tasbih. Uh, the wording is slightly different. Instead of Al Adim, it's Al Ala. And as we said, it would be said minimally once in the sujood. And the author continues F, saying, Rabbik farli, my Lord, forgive me once between the sajdas. So between the two prostrations, one has to say this at least one time, and they should be saying this when they're in the sitting position. So all of these different types of 
um, statements that we've mentioned, uh, the takbir, the tasmiya, the tamheed, the tasbih, and uh, the last one, which we can call su'al al maghfira or asking for forgiveness, rabbik fali. Uh, they could all be said from the beginning of that uh, movement or action until it ends. But it can't be before or after. So one can't say, for example, Rabbik Farli, when one is still in prostration before they've started to get up. And then the author goes on, G, the first Tashahud, and um, Al Qadumi, he has mentioned it here, which is useful. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, Sheikh uh, Mar'ayl Karmi, Rahimahullah, he did not actually mention it in uh, the Leela Talib, uh, and uh, Taghribi mentioned it indirectly by saying the complete version is famous. Maybe they haven't mentioned it because it's so well known, but one should also remember that you know some of these books are more geared for especially a book at the level of Dalila Talib they're, they're not spelling everything out how to do it they're assuming that you already know these things they're just giving you the detailed rulings so anyways um, the famous wording uh, of the Tashahud is mentioned here Tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu الطيباتو السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى إباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله So I think that this is a, inshallah well known uh, and just to quickly translate the meaning uh, salutations are for Allah, all acts of worship and good deeds are for Him. Peace, mercy and blessings of Allah be upon you, O Prophet. Peace be upon us and upon all of Allah's righteous slaves. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. So this is, as we said, the most uh, complete form of the tashahud, which uh, should be read when reading the tashahud. And finally, the author continues, H, sitting for the first tashahud. And the sitting is clear. I think we've already mentioned the definition of the sitting uh, in the last dars. So we will stop here. The next dars, inshallah, we will talk about the sunnas of the prayer. Um, and just quickly to reiterate, in the in the previous dars, we talked about the fourteen uh, rukun or pillars of the prayer. And today we've talked about the eight wajibat or obligatory elements, and we have differentiated the arkan pillars from the wajibat obligatory elements and that while both uh, would invalidate the prayer if left out intentionally the wajibat if left out due to forgetfulness or ignorance could be made up by making the prostration of forgetfulness which will be dealt with in a later dars so as always Please don't forget us, our brothers and sisters, our sheikhs of this world and the hereafter who have left us this great inheritance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i.